E C B Reviews. What is up? I am your host, Indo Kane, here with ECP Reviews. We're doing a review of Bad Blood 2024. And when I say we, I don't mean me. I mean we. And I got a special roundtable conference call of guests right now. First guest, we're talking with the president, CEO, lead writer of Thornton Talks Wrestling on Facebook, pro wrestling watcher for over two decades. Give it up for Thornton Parker. Hell yeah. What up, Thornton? How's it going, man? Great to be back. On, great to be on the show. Great talking with you, man. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. We also got, can't forget, my man, the WKU national champion, mixed martial artist, kickboxer, karate, grappling, and more. 20 plus year watcher of pro wrestling, Mr. Saturday Night, Xavier Cunningham. What's going on, X? Hey, what's up, y'all? It's good to be here. Feels good to be a champ as always. Shit, we kicking the, kick the shit out of competition. We about to kick the shit out of the pro wrestling world. Hell yeah, that's what I'm talking about, man. Great guys. They know exactly what they talking about. And we just going to get right into it, man. Bad Blood, Hot Atlanta host WWE Bad Blood 2024. It's kind of crazy that they even having this pay-per-view in 2024. L-O-L. So, boom, straight into it. We got McIntyre. We got Punk. Let's end this bullshit right now before it gets stale. Hell in a cell. They beat the fuck out of each other. It was real physical, real bloody match. Um, It was exactly what you was expecting out of a hell in a cell match i'm glad the motherfucker wasn't painted red um no toolboxes used in the making of this match well there was one toolbox but it was used properly this time no hell in a cell bs like the fiend r.i.p uh bray wyatt but uh yeah man i loved it i mean the crowd loved it atlanta loved it i loved the whole damn thing only thing I didn't like was McIntyre taking the L. You know, you know I hate it when McIntyre takes the L, but that's just how it is, as I mentioned in the other episodes. But McIntyre, you know, couldn't get the L. I mean, couldn't get the win, took the L. How do y'all feel about what's next for Punk and McIntyre? We saw Rollins talking a lot of shit in STL on Raw, you know, talking about retiring Punk. You know what I mean? That's a match that we've been waiting on. Obviously, he was hurt. At the Royal Rumble due to a future shock DDT going wrong. How, how, how do y'all feel? Let's start with Thornton. Thornton, what, what, what's next for Punk and McIntyre? Uh, well, um, first first things first, the Hell in a Cell was fantastic. They did the stipulation justice. Uh, stating they returned to the form of glory would be an understatement. Like, you know, it, it, you know we, used to, we used to have Hell in a Cell every year in October. Whenever the fucking pay per view will be in there, like the feuds will be lukewarm at best, and and like it just be like, man, is this really what we're doing? Like, like the last time Drew McIntyre was in a hell in a cell, he lost to a roll up. That's how bad it got. <laughs> so mm-hmm. to 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 see this, you know, okay, all right, good. You know, you got two guys that hate each other. They've been beefing all year. You know, they got one win apiece. This is how we settle it. All right, cool. My, one of my top 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 five favorite matches of the year, easily, easily, absolutely fantastic. Like okay. if, if I were Melter, that would be the five star treat. Okay, and I was thinking about that too, man. I was thinking like this. This ain't gonna be a mad classic, you know what I mean? This is this this. Like, <laughs> it's gonna be a war, and that's what it had to be. I was a little jaded that it didn't main event the show. But after watching the show, I I, under, I understood why. I, I even said while watching the show, I'll go on record. I said in the middle of watching Hell in Cell, I'm like, we better either get the Rock or Jimmy's fucking loose over night. And goddamn, we got both. Got uh, both of them. Hell yeah. Uh, anyways, um, as for what's next, I think Punk winning was the right call. Uh, you know, just because it, 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 I feel like Drew's willing to let shit go. Punk is not. Um, and until Punk eventually, you know, got that decisive win over Drew, I think it was always going to end with Punk beating Drew. Like, you mm-hmm. know, uh, just traditional babyface and heel dynamics. <laughs> Although, you can argue Drew was the babyface, technically, if you think about it. Yeah, yeah, um, you could. <laughs> but, you know, it, it, he was always going to be the mountain 
for Punk to overcome because he spent two, about three months taunting Punk about the bracelet, his family, mentioning his dog in every moment on, on, on Twitter. Like, Drew's at the player hater of the year conversation. Like, let's, let's get it. Player <laughs> hater. flowers for, like, an absolute stellar performance throughout this entire feud. I agree 100%. X, what about you, man? How you feel about the match and what's next for Punk and McIntyre? All right, for me, first thing first, I feel like CM Punk definitely needed that win more than Drew, even though I did hate that Drew did take two L's back to back. Because mm-hmm. Drew is going to be one of our top stars that's going to lead us into the future of WWE. Mm-hmm. But going for Punk, he definitely needed this win more than anything because ain't no in the world somebody about to sit here and not only play with my wife, but um, play with my dog. Because you know the old saying, you, pl- you, hurt, you play with my wife, you're going to get hurt. But if you play with my dog, I got to kill you. But getting that out the way, I felt like that match was exactly what it needed to be. It wasn't no pretty wrestling, no traditional lock, lock toe hold, drop downs, none of that. It was exactly what it needed to be. This motherfucker had a lot of shit to say, and he got exactly what he needed. It was an old-fashioned foot to the mouth. Absolutely, absolutely. And I love the finish, too, the chain around the knee. You know what I mean? Putting the beads in the mouth of McIntyre, just like McIntyre did to him on Raw. It was a hell of a match. I really loved it. Next match on the docket, we got Nia versus Bailey. I mean, I ain't going to hold you on this one. This was kind of sloppy, if you ask me. Uh, it was, and I got a lot to say about this match. Okay. Oh, well, hey, go, well, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Shoot, I wasn't going to hold you, but yeah, go ahead. Sound oh, yeah. off. <laughs> okay, because, um, like I said, I, I had to a couple of notes on this match. There was, there was so many things that went wrong in this match that I actually had to watch, watch it back a, a, a second, second time to get a good laugh in. The first one, <laughs> that, that botched out Hurricane Rana. Oh, my God. That was probably the worst fucking Hurricane Rana I've ever they, seen. They tried. It was not meant to work like that. <laughs> <laughs> Man, the, 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 the way Nia did not flip, but then Bailey was like, shit, I got to flip. Just made that 300 no. times so much fucking funnier. Baby, baby, try, but Nia, Nia's, Nia's, you know, she ain't no small woman, but baby girl, you ain't no keep weeds. <laughs> <laughs> no, for real. And, like, a lot of people, they were saying Nia Jax is improved, and, like, 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 like they said, a lot, a lot of people try to make it seem like Nia Jax is doing a lot of better than what it was, and then I had to use my own eyes, and I was like, nah, y'all lying, y'all, y'all not paying attention. Oh, hold, hold on, hold on, I will say that since she came back in the last year, she has gotten better. I think this was just a, like, their match of SummerSlam was pretty good. I think this just, this just, this just didn't work. I would have called the bad name of the office. Yeah, this was just to advance the storyline with her and Stratton. You know what I mean? Just to keep that going forward. All right, so now we got the thoughts on the Crown Jewel Championship. Obviously, they got to give Blood Money Riyadh season something to thrive off of. What, how you feeling about Champ versus Champ with Triple H saying there will be a promised, a definitive winner? Fucking hate it. I from the moment that belt was revealed and Triple H was like, "It's the Crown Jewel Championship." Like you, you saw the, the groan that Atlanta let out. You saw the, the reaction from the crowd and. The reaction of anybody viewing at home was the same. X, how you feel me, about it? I, I had liked it. It, it, felt, it felt like uh, almost kind of like Survivor Series. I know it's probably the closest thing we're going to get to Survivor Series. And it's pretty much like, here's a, a bragging rights belt to say I was the best at this year in Saudi Arabia. The only thing I'm not going to like is Cody's the top guy, Gunther the top guy. Neither one of these two stars need the L right now. Especially with Cody specifically could potentially be going Roman versus Cody versus Rock from the way it's looking at it. Cody cannot take this L right now. Gunther cannot take this L right now because he's the hottest thing on Raw. I agree. I'm, 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 I'm with Xavier. Like, this is it's an, unnecessary, it's an unnecessary match. You're already being told that neither title is on the line, so why the hell should we care? The SmackDown vs. Raw concept was extremely played out, which is why I'm glad Survivor Series stopped doing it. And, and, and on top of that, you have, you have to beat one of your top champions. You're all, Gunner's already holding, you know, the equivalent of that, of, you know, giving a kid a bag of chips in school so he'll finally shut up. Like, here, nigga, damn. Yeah, that's true. So, the Rhea vs. Liv match, I loved it. <laughs> I hate Shark Tank matches. Yeah, I hate Shark Tank matches, but this one made sense, though. You know what I mean? To eliminate Dirty Dom being involved. You know, he got involved so many times. And to bring in Raquel Rodriguez. 
Um. So what? So my question for this is: So what? What do we finally? When do we finally get the belt on Rhea? Like, what's next? And what's next for Raquel Rodriguez? I, I feel like Rhea will get that championship back, and I feel like she's gonna have to go through like another like another storyline or two where she's gonna have to overcome the odds before she comes back to live and finally win that championship back. I feel like she'll probably win it back at WrestleMania. That's a, that's just me speculating. I'm, Damn, that's a long time. <laughs> that's a long time. I'm thinking more of Saturday night's main event because, like, the story has to end with Rhea finally beating Liv for the title. We're not even concerned about that. We're concerned more about the aftermath, which you know. Um, I think Saturday night's main event. They're they're what the way they're promoting that show. It's got to be a big fucking deal. So there has to be some kind of title change on that show. I don't see it being you know. A Cody Roman match, but Rhea finally beating Liv for the title. I right, cool. I mean, the the match was nothing like bad. Like, first of all, one issue I have with Rhea versus Liv, as hot as the story was over the summer, Liv is like half the size of Rhea. I cannot buy her in any kind of fight with that girl. Her offense in the match was literally just throwing her into shit. I don't know. You 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 guys bought her versus. UFC world champion Ronda Rousey. You can't buy this? Uh, look, Ronda, Ronda, I didn't buy her against Ronda. I was just tired of Ronda. But they, <laughs> but they, like, they packaged it right, though. If, I, if you ask me, Liv beating Ronda the way she did, that's the best possible way you could write some shit like that. That's just me, though. I feel like if you draw it up right, give Liv a little help, the Judgment Day, a girl like Raquel that's up to Rhea's size, it could be a little yep. believable. Hell yep. yeah, I think so. I Liv, like I mean, it. Liv and Raquel makes sense for many reasons. Number one, Raquel is on record having beef with Rhea. Two, her and Liv are, are on record as friends. They're two-time tag team champions. I mean, granted, that don't mean shit either, but <laughs> right, it's still right, a thing. Right. And, and Raquel can can play the diesel to, to Liv Shawn Michaels. Right, right. The dirty work, doing the heavy lifting. Yeah, be, be the heavy. You cannot convince me that was the planned finish for that match. Something went wrong. Like I, Raquel coming back and interfering, interfering made sense, but the execution of that was terrible. Like I don't think it's supposed to end on DQ because it, it made it made it very clear when like after Raquel laid out real with the uh, with the Tejana bomb, she she, uh, she, her. Like, she laid live on top of her uh-huh, like she yeah. was supposed to be pinning her. I'm like something went wrong here. Yeah. And then on top of that, like bro, you could hear a pin drop when Raquel popped out because I promise you, nobody in Atlanta knew who the fuck that woman was. Well, we hadn't seen her in a while. Shit, we hadn't seen her. And they hadn't really built her up. Honestly, I don't like her being healed. I feel like when you got somebody that's a baby face like that, that the crowd genuinely loves, you don't turn them. For the love of God, don't turn them. Do you know how hard it is in this business to get a baby face that people don't turn on that they love and consistently support? That is, it is, it's harder to do that than it is to be a heel. You can, you can get, you can get anybody to hate anybody to like somebody. That's a whole different story, man. And that's I, a challenge, bro. That's like, what I'm saying. He's done so well with it. Like, especially after his AEW run is absolutely amazing. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't like the fact that Raquel Rodriguez, cause I mean, they, they could have picked any big girl. To, you know what I mean? <laughs> to stand up yeah. to Rhea, man. Like you, you had a really good baby face, man. Don't. That's why Bianca Belair, in my opinion, should never turn. I know a lot of y'all wanted to turn, and went, no, man. I, they, all they, I'm saying <laughs> is that Bianca heel turn is gonna feed some families. It's just gonna be her out there talking and popping gum and wearing black. <laughs> And I don't want to see. And I don't want to see that, man. <laughs> uh, uh, all right, you 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 might be honest. Like, I mean, it worked for her. It got her over at NXT. I'm just saying. All right. So last but not least, we got Bloodline versus Cody and Roman. Uh, I don't even really like tag team main events, especially after that fucking Armageddon main event with King Booker and Finley and John Cena and Batista. I, I've been turned off. Uh, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. I've been turned it, off for tag it, team main events ever since then. Against, uh, against Cody and Roman, 
against awesome troops. Oh my god! See, yeah, shit like that. Like I'm good, dude. I'm good. You're, it's not even. It's not even a matter of who's gonna win. You don't even care about who's gonna win. You're just interested in like the match isn't even about you know Solo and Jacob Bot too. It's about can Cody and Roman ex- get, coexist. Oh, there's that fucking word, dude. <laughs> fucking coexist. Can these two get along. Yeah, I'm. Oh my they god. Met, they met on Georgia Tech field. <laughs> with moments like 12 limousines and shit <laughs> I'm like oh this, we couldn't just meet around the corner or something Applebee's man <laughs> <laughs> hey look it, it, it's silly but bro like the way they filmed it was fantastic I, I loved it it was a it was a really long it was a really long TV tag match, but that's not why you watched it. You watched it for the star power, right? And I, the star power is what took it over the top, in in my opinion. Yeah. So like you know, once you saw Jimmy Uso, you're like, oh shit, here we go. Now we're in for the cinema. You yeah. know? Yeah, I agree. And Roman hadn't lost a step either. First match since Mania hadn't lost a fucking step. Not a beat at all. Still in great shape. Still got his conditioning. Still got all his moves. Still over like Rover. Jacob Fatu was put in the main event working spot and did not disappoint out there with real heavyweight stars. You know, I love it. You know what I mean? That so. Roman Jacob match going that Roman and Jacob Fatu match gonna be fire, bro. Oh yeah, he talked a ton of shit to him, man. That entire match. Pledging his allegiance to Solo, his new tribal chief. Solo, I love you. <laughs> oh, shit. We got the return from Jimmy Uso, which I ain't never heard a bigger pop for Jimmy Uso in my life, kid. Okay. <laughs> like, it was, a, it was, a, I don't know, it was somebody started like a fake room about two weeks ago talking about how this man died, and I'm sitting there like, y'all can go to hell, shut up. <laughs> and then the, the, the fucking pop. You got, I'm seeing you like, damn, both Usos are baby face now. Man, I said, this is crazy. X, how you feel about the match? Uh, man, there was a lot going on in that tag team match. First thing first, Cody delivering that frost flash back to um, Jacob after Jacob being terrorizing everybody with that frost flash. Man, that frost flash was beautiful. Yeah. And I love seeing that just frost flash. Yeah, man, he fucking soared through the sky. I said, this nigga, here. Never seen him do no shit like that, man. The, the salute he gave to Roman, though, <laughs> like, was like, take over. <laughs> I'm going this way. <laughs> Man. So, so, on the other hand, I wasn't too stalled, stalled on him at first, but I think he might be world champion within the next 10 years. So, he long? Like to keep at it. You think so? He, he, How you think it? He, he likes this shit that pretty solid. Solo's trying, but Solo was is not ready for, he's not a main event level worker yet. He's got time, but like it, 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 it feels like you know he's diet Uso. <laughs> he's Uso light. <laughs> yeah, he's real Uso yeah, light. He's, diet, he's 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 the, he's the third Uso with you know a touch of Umaga in there, but like not the the viciousness or or supposed intim- the, not the the charisma of the Usos or the intimidation factor that made Umaga such a compelling character. What mm-hmm. I don't like about Solo is when he comes to the ring and he got them suits on that's four sizes too damn big. I'm about to get <laughs> 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 Like you got a 1990s that NBA D- draft. That D-Mob, <laughs> that D-Mob and Def Jam been dead ass suit. <laughs> <laughs> With Stacey Adams ass suit, man. Get the hell out of here. <laughs> but yeah, his moveset for me is just two punch kicky at this point. Especially when he's been oh. doing it at a top level for so long. You had a match against Cena at Mania. I mean, you know what I mean? Like it's just, You can say that about all the Samoans. Roman and the Usos are the exact same way. Ah, uh, man. Roman's just got a different element to him, though, man. He he does Roman, more than Roman, them. I Roman, gets away with it because of, Roman gets away with it because of star power. <laughs> I guess. I don't well, know. Same, I don't notice it when he does it, though. It. All of them other niggas, I notice it. It's just like punch, kick, punch, kick, Samoan drop. Like, like, I be like, ha, oh, man, like, god damn, they, can y'all do something else? Do they all do it, bro. Go back and watch The Rock. He would, you know, he didn't have no, no 20 fucking moves, you know. Punch <laughs> kick, some low and drop, DDT, kip up, rock bottom, people's elbow, boom. Black ass sharpshooter. <laughs> but that, 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 that's what made him unique. He, ma- he maximized, like, the most out of, like, the least. And I think that's what a lot of a lot of wrestlers are missing. 
Like, if you notice, like, today, a lot of wrestlers, they can't even keep an entire match in the ring. They got to go, go out the ring and do something. Like, furniture is actually more over than they are right now, if you really think about I, it. I, I'm, yeah, I'm not going to argue with you, bro. That barricade, that barricade breaking spot has been done at least four times in the last two weeks of WWE television. They're killing like, they, the barricade they, spot. They was every week on Raw. <laughs> like, 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 shit, when was the last time you seen a pay-per-view where someone did not go through that Spanish announce table? I, I'm like, it, it gotta be like, um, hazing at this point. So we get the final boss, The Rock, appears at the end and looks in disgust as Roman and Jimmy save Cody from getting jumped by the Great Value Bloodline. I'm tired of this roided up asshole on my TV. He came out here, he did nothing. He stood, did a bunch of posture, and they had to flex his muscles by counting down to have his music played. Go away, Dwayne. We know you won't have that good match with Roman next year, and I, I, I pray it stays Roman and The Rock next year. I feel like they're going to try to push it as a triple threat match just because of like the three-way war going on between the Bloodline, Roman, Rock, Cody. Mm-hmm. But I hope, like, even though this year we all wanted to see Roman versus Cody to see that Cody win that WWE Championship, I mm-hmm. feel like this match definitely has to be Roman versus The Rock. Like, and at some point, the Bloodline got to end. And I feel like this is the way to um, end all of it. Oh, uh, bro, you see it the way them the way them Samoans reproduce. That bloodline will be going on the journey. Yeah, we can rehash this out for years, man. In about three to five years, we're gonna be talking about Journey Five Two. So then, after the show, Kevin Owens on social media. There's no cameras around from the actual WWE production team, but Kevin Owens beats Cody Rhodes up in the parking lot, kicks his ass. There's tons of videos on social media. Triple H addresses it on Raw. Says something. He puts out a tweet, something about Kevin Owens being fine. Blah 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 blah. So how you feel about them doing that, man? That's something new. You know, I never seen I them do that before. I have mixed thoughts. Oh, my bad. No, long, I'm, 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 gonna, I'm gonna be real quick. Long story short, I like how they did it because they 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 they, they didn't put this on TV because everybody knew that heel turn was coming. And I felt like um, if they would have done it like. After the Rock would have went backstage and out of nowhere, Kevin Owens came out of nowhere and hit Kevin um, Cody with a pump up power bomb. Everybody be like, "Really, dude? Why now?" But like, you see him in the parking lot, fans are leaving the arena. They're like, "Oh, look, that's Kevin and Cody." It looked like they're having a good conversation. And then the next thing you know, you see Kevin putting his hands on this man and he's beating his ass. And everybody's like, "Oh my goodness!" And for like the whole week, everybody's talking like, "What happened? What's being said? Why is he stuffing out Cody?" And you know damn well why. Kevin had told him, I don't like them. You they, Look what they did to me the last four years. Every time something goes crazy with the bloodline, I'm on the, I'm on the receiving end of getting stumped up by three or four different people. And you know how, how Roman was. Why are you teaming up with this man? I don't give a fuck what he's telling you now. Yeah, it, it felt real. You know, like... Yeah. I, I, if, if it weren't, if it weren't filmed the way, if they didn't do it the way they did, I would have argued that Rock's return hurt it because anytime The Rock is in the room, he's going to be the only thing that you can talk about. And it, it just sucks the energy from any and everything else, including Roman and Cody as, as top baby faces as they are. I thought it was brilliant. Like, you don't even, you don't even got to sell the story. You let social media sell that for you. Like, yeah, everybody's talking about The Rock coming back, but then you're also like, damn. Kevin Owens, Kevin Owens jumped Cody Rhodes. He jumped him in the parking lot. You know, some fan posted that shit on Twitter. Like, oh snap! This is this is real, dog. He got real beef. All right, man. Well, yeah, it was good talking bad blood. Until next time.